Let's jump back to the studio and the process of producing a record. Now, when you go into the studio, how, how do you approach it? Is there, a, is there a tone that you pick up from the artist? Is there something that you bring to it that isn't it does, there? Okay, it starts with two things. It starts with love and then trust. Those two things are the components, the, the real components of what make it happen. After that, everything bounces off of that. If the cover's messed up, if the tempo's too slow, or too fast, or wrong key, the wrong musicians, the wrong engineer, blah, 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 it's the producer's fault. But if it's a hit, it's the artist did it all. Of course. That's the way it works. <laughs> I'm, I swear to God, man. And every time, man, please give me a hit, please give me a hit, and after it's done, it's natural to want to say, I did it all. That's human nature, I understand that. It doesn't bother me either. Uh, but that's, that's the way it rolls. But it's, there's so many elements. You have to know, when, when you mess with people like Ray Charles and Frank Sinatra or, or somebody like that, you're telling them to jump without a net, man, you better know what you're talking about. So, so when you go into the studio with an artist for the first time, what's the priority? The priority is to know the artist. Is that, that's where love comes in. Because if you love an artist, you take the time and the patience and the, and the initiative to know everything about them. How, do, how are they in this register? How are they in this register? How high do they sing? How low do they sing? Uh, how many more takes can they handle? Is it time to take a break and just, just have some fun? Or is it time to push them for three more takes? And you better know what you're talking about because it, I've seen some, some incredible encounters go down when a, a producer doesn't understand the artist. And, and the artists don't play. The artists will let you know how they feel real quick, you know. What's the difference between the process of writing and recording a song and writing and recording a movie score? If you're inside and you have a close-up on a woman's face crying and she's talking, you have to learn how to write a score that doesn't get in the way of her dialogue. You know, there's, there's just so many elements involved. R not in her register, so she's got her own space. Then you go outside and there's 200 people with, with those big lens, you know. You can't write the same music for that. And so you have to make that one piece of music sound like one whole piece of music, but still covering all the dramatic aspects of it. There's two things in our business, a song and a story. The rest of it are accoutrements, man. If you've got a great song, and I discovered this 45 years ago, if you've got a great song, it can make the worst thing in the world sound great. And you have heard that, <laughs> I'm sure. And if you got a bad song, the three best singers in the world can't make it work. And I've heard that too. You know, it cannot work if the song doesn't, doesn't happen. Same with the story in the movie. So we have to choose between representative scoring, which is everything you see is what you hear, you run up the step, the kiss, and everything you see, you hear. We kind of went against that and went, put it over here, listen to Fellini, and, and, and put that over here, and the eye over here and the ear here, so the audience could get pulled in the middle there. It's a very effective thing, and Cold Blood, I used a lot of it too, you know, on the heat of the night. But uh, it's, that's the science. You get that out of the way quick. So you can go on and get, let your soul go. That's when you let the motion loose, you know. So you use the, 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 whatever you need technically to get going. And uh, uh, then your soul comes out and you let the motion lotion flow.